listeners and subscribers. How are you holding up out there? You know, I just want to make sure that you're still safe since it seems so many people have just up and lost their minds in the midst of this outbreak. And it's proving dangerous, okay? But really quickly, I think I should clear something up. My point in these videos has never been that coronavirus isn't real. There's many coronaviruses, okay? It's how this outbreak is being used to get away with things that normally wouldn't fly. Also, I don't think there's anything wrong with taking the advice of experts or healthcare professionals under advisement if they aren't politically or financially motivated. But unfortunately, that is the path that many of these healthcare professionals and experts went down. Things, they quickly became not about keeping people safe, but power grabs, financial gain, and political motivation. And in the same way, you shouldn't take too seriously a defense of Trump from the right or an attack of Trump from the left because of, you know, bias and the cult of personality. It's the same way you shouldn't take advice from these so-called experts or professionals that are tainted with financial motivation or political influence. That's nothing revolutionary. Because look, by this time, you either never had COVID in the first place or you had it and now it's gone. And while it's unclear that people who recover have total immunity to the virus, studies do hint at partial immunity, at least in the short term, because generally there's always some form of immunity when you get a virus. That's what this information here is telling you. The information is buried and it can be difficult to find, but you can have immunity to this virus. But the media constantly advocates to the contrary. So here's the thing, if you can get COVID, recover from it, and still not be immune to it, then how is a coronavirus vaccine supposed to provide that immunity? Because if we just look at the funding going to drug and vaccine companies, somebody stands to make a handsome profit. And not just that, if you noticed, even ageism is rampant right now. It's open season against the healthy and the young, okay? Look, the short end of the stick comes for us all. With COVID, older folks and people with pre-existing conditions got the short end. Sometimes it's unfair, there's no getting around that. But that's their cross to bear, not everybody else's. The healthy and young shouldn't be shamed because coronavirus can have a hard time infecting them and making them severely ill. Along with the virus, it's that kind of groupthink that kills people as well. Because if you think shaming people into wearing masks or taking a vaccine is a silver bullet to stop deaths, you just disbelieve science. But make no mistake, I do get it. We're human. Holding similar beliefs is one of the many ways we can bond. And it's that yearning to bond that can often be powerful enough to warp and pervert objective evaluation of information. While that's indeed dangerous, it is understandable. People don't want to be shamed. They want to fit in, even if it means subjecting themselves to possible tyranny. Because when a certain belief becomes shared by a social group, and that belief is part of how they identify, it can be next to impossible to alter that even in the face of verifiable evidence to the contrary of it. And that's one of the things I think we have to understand is that there's a lot of psychology behind scenarios like this and fear as well. And that appears to be a big motivator. We overestimated the COVID threat. That's clear now. More than twice the number of dead have recovered. But the initial fear still does linger. And it's the exploiting of that fear that's unfolding right now. And once that fear is exploited, a whole mess of things happen, okay? That's what I was getting at in my fear contagion video. Because here's the thing, the coronavirus is essentially akin to the flu, okay? Not the same, but akin. And that's a very fair comparison, and I'll tell you why. As of circa the 4th of April, right, the flu and coronavirus had killed roughly the same number of people, 62,000, okay? And that's with a flu vaccine. Eventually, COVID deaths did finally catch up to the flu, but now that the CDC stopped tracking flu deaths this season, you can't really fairly compare the two going forward. Yet, the media can still claim that COVID kills more than the flu, but the people won't be made aware of the major negating caveats, okay? One of those caveats being that according to the WHO and the CDC, the number of COVID deaths can go up even if it wasn't COVID that killed you. Okay, you can pause and read the screen on the information if you want, but the Illinois Health Director explains right here. Illinois' virus-related death toll continues to climb. The Director of Public Health took time today to explain how the department rules someone an actual COVID death. It can be a little confusing. She says anyone who has COVID when they pass away will be included in that category. Dr. Ngazi Azike explained this does not mean the virus caused that death, but if someone does test positive for COVID before dying, that is classified a coronavirus fatality. You were in hospice and had already been given, you know, a few weeks to live, and then you also were found to have COVID, that would be counted as a COVID death. It means that if, um, it technically, if even if you died of a 
clear alternate cause, but you had COVID at the same time, it's still listed as a COVID death. So um, everyone who's listed as a COVID death doesn't mean that that was the cause of the death, but they had COVID at the time of death. Now, if you are already familiar with this, this is basically standard procedure implemented on a case-by-case -case basis. But the problem is it lends itself to massive error in certain circumstances, and it's these errors and these numbers that were used to justify the lockdowns. In America alone, the lockdowns caused a nearly 22% rise in child sex abuse reports. 33 million people are out of work. That's how selfish and insensitive these lockdowners have become. 33 million out of work. That's more people than all the dead, sick, and recovered from COVID around the entire world combined. More than triple. And it isn't because of COVID this is happening. It's due to the mismanagement of it and our endorsement and indifference to that mismanagement. More people have been negatively impacted by our response to COVID than COVID itself. Yet, like a broken record, people can only drone the same thing again and again and again. People are dying. Give up your rights. People are dying. Give up your freedoms. How is me giving up my rights and freedoms going to stop anyone from dying? And how many men and women have died in conflict to defend these very freedoms? Our forefathers, our veterans. So not only are these lockdowners selfish and insensitive, they're ignorant to boot. They're essentially saying we need to let our liberties die with the COVID victims. That's a tragedy. That's callous. If they don't like freedoms, there's other countries for them. And if there's any doubts about the dangers this lockdown has caused, Let's look no further than California Governor Gavin Newsom, right? Most of you have probably already heard he flipped his lid because a handful of people went to the beach to cool off as the heat increases. As a matter of fact, we're going through a heat wave on certain parts of the country and massive cool offs in others. He completely lost his temper and retaliated against the citizens by closing even more beaches. So it isn't enough that COVID has become politicized by the low figures on the left and right, but now it's being wielded not to keep people safe, but to lash out in fits of rage. But you know what? As sad as that is, he did us all a favor. And I'm going to tell you how. He not only showed us what kind of arbitrary leverage this outbreak yielded for people in positions like his, but he also proved why not to give up your freedom, especially in times like this. Because if you do, you're at the whim of officials that can just fly off the handle and abuse their power for personal satisfaction. And this should come as no big surprise because we're talking about the same state that's letting violent sex offenders out of jail, yet arresting and fining people for not wearing masks. That's what this stretching of the COVID truth allowed. The facts were misrepresented. Now should the same government and officials who misrepresent the facts hold for itself the only and final say of your health? I don't think so. The good thing is, is that place has actually fought back and things are opening up, but eternal vigilance is the prescription there. The sad part, however, is things will never be quite the same, and the real damage has already been done.